Need some fast, cheap, reliable muck coins? Go to MMOXP.com and use discount code MONEYSHOT for 5% off your order. Link in the description below. Welcome back, YouTubers and Madden fans. This is Mad Money Shot. Sniff that Madden cheese as always. Got another Madden 21 preview video for you. Today I'm going over the top 10 teams in Madden 21. Whether you're playing CFM or Regs, these should be the best teams to use to give yourself a competitive advantage once the game comes out. If you think there's any that I left out, let me know in the comments section. Other than that, let's go ahead and let's get right into this video. So starting off, we have the Tennessee Titans. This is one of the hardest teams for me as far as making this list was the 10th team. I think the next nine teams are pretty inarguable, but I think you could easily make... Uh, a case for a lot of teams at number 10. I went with the Titans because obviously they made it to the Final Four last year and they have one of the best running backs in the game uh, in Derrick Henry. As long as running the football is important, guys like Derrick Henry are going to be are going to be worth their weight in gold. So ultimately, these guys, uh, especially, uh, I mean, if, if Madden 21 is as broken as Madden 20 was when it came to the run game, uh, you can't replace that. So they still have a really strong offensive line as well. The defense is solid. They had some losses as well from last year's roster. Darrell Casey, Delaney Walker, probably the biggest one's Marcus Mariota if you like to run with your quarterback and Jack Conklin one of their offensive linemen but ultimately they still have a really solid roster intact Next up, we got the Buccaneers. Now, this is a team that has a pretty outstanding roster in all but like one or two key areas. So that's really what kind of, you know, wastes some of the, the potential of this team. But it's still a top team. I mean, Tom Brady, if you take this team into CFM, you got Tom Brady for like a year or two, uh, which feels like something that Madden players have been saying for a long time, to be honest with you, that Tom Brady should retire about now. But ultimately, I mean, he's a great quarterback. The X factors he has uh, are going to be huge, and all of his superstar abilities are going to be huge in the game. And then he also has some of the best receivers in the game helping him out. You can see right now in the roster uh, Rob Gronkowski came back somehow is better than Mike Evans which I really find hard to believe uh, and then also Chris Godwin they have some really strong uh, strong you know weaponry when it comes to the players around Tom Brady not necessarily in the run game uh, I mean they brought LaShawn McCoy in I mean I don't understand what that's going to do for you at his age but between the run game and the uh, the offensive line which isn't really that great the offense has its problems on the defensive side the front seven is is stellar uh, as far as the defensive line the linebacker got a lot of young guys on there as well but the cornerbacks in the secondary is very suspect next up we got the Packers here's another team that once again a lot of strengths a lot of weaknesses their biggest weakness on the offense is probably their receiving core everybody and their mother was saying why didn't the Packers draft a receiver because they don't go out to get anybody in free agency so you still have Devontae Adams who's a top flight receiver but after that it's a little bit tricky uh, they brought in Devin Funches I mean he's a good size guy but you probably want a little bit more speed on that roster but as far as the running game goes the offensive line goes it's all great the defensive side Side is probably best in the passing game the secondary stellar top-notch bunch of young guys on there that are already paying off and the defensive front's pretty solid too especially on the edge I mean have some of the best outside linebackers in the game so this is the type of offense that if the running game is important Aaron Jones is going to eat uh, he's uh, obviously a very good running team and they have a really good pass defense so teams aren't going to be able to catch up if you get ahead Next up, we got the Eagles. This is typically one of the deepest rosters in the game every year, and they prove it by letting all their players get injured. Uh, on the offensive side, I mean, you have everything you need. They brought in a lot of speed in the offseason with some young draft picks uh, and Marquise Goodwin, who's going to be one of the fastest players in the entire game pretty much every year he's in it. And they pretty much got weapons everywhere, running backs, tight ends, you name it, strong offensive line. On the defensive side, that's where they, they lose a little bit of mustard off the hot dog. Uh, the front four is great, and it's loaded with depth. The cornerbacks got better uh, with the addition of Darius Slay but the linebacking core looks like a bunch of guys they just picked up at the local YMCA. Next up, we got the Cowboys. This is one of the best offenses in the game. They lost a little speed on their fastball when they lost their starting center in Travis, Travis Frederick. Uh, but the line's still really strong, and the weapons are probably even stronger than they've ever been, with Michael Gallup, C.D. Lamb, and Amari Cooper at the three wide receivers. Those three guys plus Ezekiel Elliott gives you all the weapons you'll need to have a, a dynamic offense. On the defensive side, they lost a couple guys. Uh, they lost uh, Byron Jones, their best cornerback, Robert Quinn, uh, probably the their best pass rusher from the previous season uh, but ultimately they still have a lot of really good players the linebacking core is still the strength of the unit and the secondary has some good young pieces to replace what they lost next up we got the saints now this is a team once we get to the top five here i say the next five teams i mentioned could all be arguably number one there's a different tier between the top five and the bottom five uh, and the saints are the first team to start there i'd have them even higher but ultimately whether you pick them in a cfm or you pick them in a regs game their biggest achilles heel is going to be drew Brees. and sorry to say that it sounds crazy 
crazy. But when you have a quarterback who's as old as he is, you're not going to have a long-term future with him. And he also has some of the worst throw power of a starting quarterback in the game. So even if you have explosive weapons, which they have some pretty explosive weapons on this team, an 83 throw power is going to limit your offense quite a bit. Your offensive line might be one of the best in the league as well. Pretty much all their linemen are very young and talented, uh, which is a little bit different than a team like the Cowboys who's already losing players to retirement. So you're going to have this offensive line together a lot longer. The receiving core is really strong with Michael Thomas, Emmanuel Sanders, tight end Jared Cook, who's a little bit older, and Alvin Kamara, who's one of the best receiving backs in the game. Then you also have Latavius Murray as a backup running back, who's also very good as well. So the offense is loaded. There's no holes in it. On the defensive side, there's not a lot of holes either. But like I said, ultimately, I think there's going to be teams that have a slightly better quarterback situation. Like the Chiefs, for example, with Patrick Mahomes. I mean, this is the type of quarterback you want, a quarterback with all types of, you know, X factors, a strong arm, youth, all that stuff. Uh, you don't want the 500 million that they're paying him, though. That's probably the biggest issue. So if you take this team at CFM, that's probably going to be your biggest problem. But he's well worth it. So ultimately, the Chiefs come next on my list. I mean, this is one of the best, you know, receiving cores in the game when you think of the speed they have. Tyreek Hill, Sammy Watkins, McCall Hardman, uh, Travis Kelsey, who's a tight end, I guess. Uh, they also have a, a young drafted running back in Clyde Edwards Hilaire. So the offense is loaded. The defense actually was very surprising last year and came on very strong. Uh, there's a few holes there. I mean, the defensive line, other than Chris Jones and Frank Clark, doesn't have a ton. Uh, they lost some cornerbacks. But if you pick this team, it's most likely for their overpowered offense. Let's keep it real. Next up, we got the Niners. Now, here's another team with a lot of young talent. Uh, I would say their biggest issue, once again, is probably their quarterback. They don't have a special quarterback. They just have a guy in Jimmy Garoppolo. Uh, no X factors or superstar abilities, I would imagine, as far as he's concerned. Uh, but they have an amazing roster. The defensive side, especially the defensive line, is loaded. The linebackers are loaded. Uh, the secondary is loaded. I mean, they pretty much just have everything they need. A lot of young weapons around uh, Jimmy Garoppolo as well. Receivers and running backs and tight ends with George Kittle, the best in the game. So, really strong roster. Next up, we got the Seahawks. Now, this is a team that has some of the best players in the game. One of the, maybe the best middle linebacker in Bobby Wagner, the highest rated. Uh, one of the best quarterbacks in Russell Wilson. And they went out and traded for Jamal Adams off the Jets, who hasn't even been added to the uh, to the roster here. Uh, but ultimately, those three guys, I mean, there's a lot of pop, a lot of sizzle on this team uh, in the defensive side and the offensive side. The cornerbacks, they have a pair of uh, really good young cornerbacks in uh, Shaquille Griffin and a guy, Quentin Dunbar, they brought over. Not a lot of people know about out of the Washington Redskins. Six foot three guy with a lot of speed on the offensive side they got another six foot three guy with a lot of speed by the name of dk metcalf uh that's going to be you know he's going to be the calvin johnson of our generation so this is going to be uh one of the better teams to pick and then last but not least, we got the Ravens. This is a team that, you know, I'm going to go out on a limb and say they get it done this year. They also went for it, brought in Kalias Campbell on the defensive line. And they already have one of the best secondaries in the game with, with all pros like Marcus Peters, Earl Thomas, Marlon Humphrey. I mean, their, their secondary is loaded. The defensive front's pretty loaded as well. On the offensive side, it's all about Lamar Jackson and that run game. Him, Mark Ingram, J.K. Dobbins, who they just drafted in the second round, the highest rated rookie running back. Uh, and then they also have some really good speed of wideout with Marquise Brown uh, and a young, you know, young potential guy in six foot three miles Boyko with 90 plus speed so ultimately uh, this roster is set in the front and the back and it's really set with a lot of young talent so if you pick them in a CFM you're going to be pretty good so that's it that's the list if you guys have seen more videos like this let me know in the comment section the like button I'll do that next other than that thanks for watching man my shit out need more help or just want to show your support then head over to my patreon and join my team where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays as well as early access to my bids and more link in the description below